morning, my sisters and brothers. The Lord is risen. Today we thank God that our Lord has risen. Is risen. As our pastor mentioned this morning, he has not risen. Our Lord is risen. Amen? Our watchword for this week, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. And our call to worship, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are so happy that we can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all stand as we recite our mission statement together. We seek to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and to use all that we possess to call all peoples to the truth of the gospel through worship, evangelism, discipleship, and service. Our goal is to provide a spiritual atmosphere that is loving, friendly, and filled with the presence of God, where you can experience the love of Christ through people who care. Let us all remain standing as we lift our voices in the hymn of praise, the hymn number 117 in the Caribbean Moravian praise. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus, my Savior. Let us all sing to the glory of Almighty God.
third to our Easter liturgy on page 133 to 136 in the Caribbean Arabian Praise Liturgy book or on page three in our bulletins. The Lord is risen. resurrection and the life. All who have faith in me shall live, even though they die. No one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. I am the first and the last, and I am the living one. I was dead, and now I am alive forevermore. Christ was raised to live to life, the first fruits of the harvest of the dead. As Adam all die, so in Christ all will be brought to life. As we have worn the, live, the likeness of the earthly, so we shall wear the likeliness of, hev of the heavenly. He will transfigure our humble bodies and give them a, f a form life that is his own glorious body. Sown in perishable things, is raised in sown in humiliation, is raised in glory. sown in weakness, is raised in power. sown a physical body. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. I believe 
believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who created all things and was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I believe in God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He rescues us from the domain of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He has conferred on us in Christ every spiritual blessing and made us fit to share the heritage of God's people in the realms of light. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, from him and through him, and for him all things exist. And we through him, he became flesh and live among us, taking the form of a servant, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of man. He was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. He spoke of what he knew and testified to what he had seen. To all who put their trust in him, he gave the right to become children of God. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father, and whom our Lord Jesus Christ sent, after he went away, to be our comforter and to be with us forever. He comes to the aid of our weakness, affirming that we are God's children. He floods our heart with God's love and makes our bodies his holy temple. He works in us the will of God, giving to each one gifts as he chooses. Glory to God in the Church of Jesus Christ, the holy universal Christian church in the communion of saints at all times and forever and ever. of the world, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your cross and reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection, by your appearing to the disciples, by your glorious ascension, by your sending the Holy Spirit, by your word and sacraments, by your abiding presence, by your coming again in glory. Eternal God and Father, by whose power our Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, 
with the whole company of the people in heaven and on earth, we rejoice and give thanks that he who was dead is alive again and lives forevermore, that he is with us now and always, and that nothing can part us from your love in him, that he has opened a way to your kingdom and brought us the gift of eternal life. of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorable on your whole church, and by the tranquil operations of your perpetuation providence, carry out the works of your humanities of salvation, and let the whole world feel and see that those things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things shall attain to perfection through him from whom they took their origin even through our Lord Jesus Christ. God, you are the source of all comfort and consolation. We pray today for those who are sick and suffering. We lift up in prayers for those who are in trouble. And, O oh God, we come to you for sisters Lydia Ross, Shamin Gilead, Rose Claire Josiah, Shana Rizin, Damaris Bracha, Dora Wigley, Nellery Newton Saki, Shermel Brown, Claudina Barnard, Janine McDonald, Glendina Isaac, Cynthia Van Viverhout Harris, Winifred Vilinas, Maria Phillip, Diane Hobson, Cheryl Milliner, Joy Joseph, Andrea Francis Drew, and Martin, Viola Benjamin, Heather Isaac, Namari Nelson, Janet Francis, Olive Tongue, our brothers, Vernon Drew, John Jonas, Morris Benjamin, Thomas Christian, Henry Sabrati III, Jonathan Francis, Ralston Davis, Desmond Phillip, Reverend Dr. Courtois Jarvis, Trevor Brown, Shalu Christian, Maurice Francis, Alfred Josiah, Austin Roland Jr., Dennis Lynch Sr., Roderick Arthur, Steve, Steve Williams, and Aidan Stevens. I pray for all the children of this church and who were baptized here at Friedensburg, our acolytes, our joint boards, our pastors, our conference, the PEC, and our province, the United States Virgin Island, COVID victims and its survivors, and as well as the Russian-Ukraine conflict, Israel-Palestine conflict, and all our high schools, our brothers and sisters, family and friends in our neighboring islands and the rest of the mainland. For the widows and the widowers, the motherless and the fatherless, for the sad and despairing, reveal yourself to each one and teach them to find in you the strength in all troubles and a refuge in every time of anxiety. O oh God, you all, each should fail. Though all should fail, you remain true. And though all things die, you live. We pray for those who are near the end of their earthly pilgrimage, that they may spend their remaining days in your presence and meet in debt with the strength of your grace may pass into nearer light of your knowledge and love. God of peace, 
whose son, our Lord Jesus, has brought back from the dead to become the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood that seal an eternal covenant equipped us to do your will in everything that is good, that our lives may always be acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is risen. I don't look so. The Lord is risen. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will. And if there is no other day that we are to be happy and really rejoice, it is this day. Let's say it one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will. And. Come on, let's sing it with me now. This is the day Listen, listen, listen. If you, if you are not happy that you are a Christian, I'm sorry for you. But I happy, like puppy. I happier than a pig in mud that I have the hope of eternal life. 
And I have that hope because early Sunday morning, today is that day. It's not preaching time yet, but I feel like saying it one time. Early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. Wait, wait, I don't sound like I'm a serious man. He got up from the grave with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And because he lives, I can live. Amen. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you. I took up the welcome time, but me has me just feel good. We had to do that. Just had to just had to do that. It's good to see you all on this Easter day, this resurrection Sunday, when we celebrate the faith of the fact that our Lord and Savior, He, as I said this morning, is not He has risen, He is risen. Because He's still relevant. He is not there. He is still alive. Amen. And so welcome to us. All. Um, I want to say a special welcome to my mommy, who is here with us today. Lady Janet is here with us this morning, and I'm happy to have my mommy here today. Because some other people have their mommies here, and they think that it's them one have a mommy. But I want them to know that my mommy is here too. Right? After all, after all. Kayla, who is normally here with us, her mom is here with us from Nevis as well. So we want to recognize you especially and welcome to you from Nevis. And is there anyone else who's visiting that I'm missing? Yes, you, yes, yes. Can I, tell me, how we go again? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Arlene Roberts Faustin. Right. I live in New York, but I am from Antigua. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Potter's Village. Mm -hmm. I am, what is it about Potter people again? Don't, don't, don't tell us. Don't tell I us. won't tell you. It's not a good thing for it's, Resurrection Sunday. It's something about Sunday. 99 of them. It's not a good thing for Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cecile is my friend since childhood. I went to Christ the King. So everybody knows Christ the King girls. Um, mm. What else? <laughs> what else do we have? Me? Um, I am a Friday, Roberts, Philo, Baltimore, anything that you can think of, Kirby. I have a lot of family around here, so um, some of, most of you I don't know, and a lot of family I have around here, so I hope to meet a lot of people. Pardon? Oh, yeah, Roberts, Timo is my family. Okay. <laughs> so there's just endless family around here, and I keep meeting people everywhere, so right. that's a good thing. So. I'm glad to be here. I worship with you online. So. I was about to say, she's a regular Friedensburg <laughs> online on person. I worship on Sundays online. Yes. I'm an active worshiper. Yes, we know. <laughs> okay. I see that. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to you as well. Well, we welcome you. We have a song. You, you should know this song because you're a regular now, but we're going to sing it for you in person. But, but for you, Miss Kayla, Mommy, we're going to sing it just for you. We have a song that you, you can't take this back to, to Nevis because it won't fit. Okay, you can't say we welcome you to Nevis. It don't work that way. But we welcome you to Friedensburg. You're welcome in this place. Mommy can't carry to Kena either, because you can't say we welcome you to Kena. Okay, it don't work that way either. So <laughs> we welcome you to Friedensburg. You're welcome in this place. <laughs>
seated. We want to say a happy birthday to those who are celebrating this month as we close out the best month. We close out and we close out Women's Month and it's also Transfer Day and VI History Month. You see, so they just try to pack it everything because good things happen in this month. Some of us began it and Sister Betty Wilson and it ends it today. She was here this morning at five o'clock, all bedecked in, in her white with her big chapeau. You should have seen her this morning. It was a, a sight to behold, I tell you. And she donated the, the lily that we see here as part of her birthday celebration. So we give God thanks for that and for her. So Sister Betty Wilkinson, Brother Anthony Brown on the fourth, Sister Barbara Heiliger on the fourth, and Brother Vernon Drew, who celebrates on the 5th. Where's Vernon? Oh, he's not here today. All right, so we don't have anyone here. All right, so let's then, Paul, you say happy birthday to all of you. And if we don't have your, um, if we don't have your birthday, but you have a birthday this week, you say happy birthday to you as well. Shall we pause for then for a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, we thank you for the gift of life, and we thank you for these, your children, who are celebrating yet and will celebrate another year of life. God, we want to thank you for them, and we thank you for your blessings upon them. And as they begin this new year and this new journey, this new season of life, we pray, O oh God, that you will journey with them and they will journey with you, that they will hold to your unchanging hand, and if they do not know you, they will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. So our prayer today, God, is that you will bless and keep them, that you will make your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them, that you will lift up the light of your countenance upon them and grant them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we sing all the birthday things, I just want to commend to us today. We prayed earlier for uh, Sister Namari Nelson. Sister Namari Nelson is a baby, if you don't know. She is not yet a year old, and she will be having, she's had some health complications since birth, and tomorrow she'll be having a surgery for about eight hours. So we really want to commend um, her in prayer as, and ask to keep her in your prayers, and her parents as well. In the, they left the island on Monday. I went and prayed with her on Monday as well, but they have asked to, that we keep them in prayer. The surgery is going to take about six to eight hours tomorrow, so we do that as well. also want us to commend um, my godmother, one of my godmothers, Sister Janice Schrader, who lost her son rather quickly um, this weekend. Um, it was like one day you were sick, the next day they're not sure, by yesterday he was gone. And so we ask to keep her in prayer. And um, can I say, Miss Helen? Elaine? Yes. And we also keep Sister Helen and Sister Elaine in their prayers. They have lost a grand and great grand as well throughout the course of this week. And so it's, it's, quite, it's been quite a season, but we ask to keep them in our prayers. All right? God bless you. I'll be back a little later to talk about something else.
Amen. We'll continue our worship as we receive God's tithe and the offering. And our offering is sentence from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. But Christ has indeed raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Eternal God, all gifts, good gifts come from you. And we thank you, dear God, for the gifts of life. We thank you, dear God, for sending your son to die on Calvary's cross to save us from sin. And, oh God, we thank you that you have given us a portion of what we can return to you. Lord, I pray that you be with us. I pray that you bless us. I pray that you bless it and use it here on earth to further your kingdom so that whenever you come or you call, we will be ready to meet you. Bless us all, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. brothers and sisters please unhear the concerns of the congregation again you are reminded that Sunday morning worship services are mass optional and we're asking that you respect the position of those who have chosen either to wear or to not wear a mask or face covering however hand sanitization is still necessary as we move into and out of the building masks are still required at funerals Today's live stream is sponsored by Sister Barbara Heiliger in celebration of her birthday on April 4th and thanking God for his many blessings for yet another year. Hallelujah, he is risen. May the resurrection of Christ inspire our faith and renew our hope. On this Easter Sunday, let's embrace his unwavering love, learn to forgive like him, and spread joy in our world. May this live stream be a blessing to the sick, the shut-in, and those that are listening via the airwaves. Happy Easter. If you too would like to sponsor our live stream, you can do so by submitting your name and a contribution of any amount in celebration of a milestone or in remembrance of a loved one. Your name and the occasion will be mentioned as part of our notices and celebration. Submit the information to the church via email at hillofpeace at gmail.com or to Sister France. Andrea Francis Drew no later than the Wednesday before the Sunday of the sponsorship and submit the funds to the treasurer, Sister Vanessa Chumney. <clears throat> the planted flower, which is the Easter lily that adorns the church in front of the church this morning, was been donated by Sister Betty Wilson in honor of her birthday, which is today, March 31st. 
It is Easter, the day when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He suffered, he died, he arose, and now he lives forevermore. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life for us. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Please remember that your Lenten sacrificial offering is due today. And during the walk-up, you may present your Lenten sacrificial offering and place it in the basket that's immediately in the front. A Unity Prayer Watch schedule for the East and West Indies province will be from April 3rd through April 17th. And the Virgin Islands Conference is scheduled from 12 a.m. on April 12th to 11.59 p.m. on April the 14th. Friedensburg is scheduled for 8 a.m. on April 12th to, to 3.59 p.m. April 12th. Please commit and to spending time in prayer during the allotted time that's given. The Women's Fellowship will be having a movie night on April 13th. Please plan to attend and support the group efforts. More details will follow. We continue to give God thanks for the life and service of Acolyte Anitha Green. Sister Green served God through this congregation and all the congregations on St. Croix with distinction. The service of celebration and thanksgiving to God for her life, work, and witness will take place on Thursday, April 18th with viewing and tributes beginning at 9 a.m. and the service at 10 a.m. May we all take comfort in our memories and knowing that she is at rest with the God she served. Please remember that you can give your support to the work of the Lord's Church. You can mail it to Freedensburg Moravian Church, P.O. Box 617, Fetch VI, 00841. Now, in regards to PayPal, please note that we're having a bit of an issue with the PayPal at this time. So we're asking if you are accustomed to submit your, your contributions through PayPal that you not do so until further notice. Um, so you can do it by either coming in to the building on Sundays and dropping it off, or you can mail it at PO Box 617 Federal VI 00841. But until further notice, do not use PayPal. Please also note that the Sacrament of Holy Communion will be celebrated on Sunday, April the 14th, beginning at 10.30 a.m. I know that you're seeing your bulletins April 7th, but know that it's going to be on April the 14th, beginning at 10.30 a.m. Counting team members, please take note that today's counting team is Team B, along with the special counting team of Team C. Next Sunday, again, will be Team C. These are the concerns of the congregation. Please act accordingly where they concern you. As I need to have a family chat. So just.
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for, the Jesus, you're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Praise be to God. At this time, we'll call on our worship team to come and give us songs of praise and worship, after which the voice you will hear is that of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jeremy B. Francis. The Lord is risen. Come on, church. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. He's risen. It is an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. Let us remember to give him thanks and praise. And today especially because, because he, has, he is risen from the dead, what? We will have our own salvation and know that we too will rise. Amen? So let us Amen. sing alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Let's sing to the glory of God. Because we serve a risen Savior, amen? Yes. 
And because he has given his life for us, we know that he is good. But we should also ask ourselves, how is it that he can be so good yes. to us? Amen? Yes. Because he died for not his own sins, but he died for our sins. And so we should never let him down because he has given the ultimate gift. So the songwriter says, God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Let us sing to the glory of God. today is like today you just want to say hallelujah hallelujah is our highest praise god we give you praise for all that you have done and for all you continue to do because god is continued to be he's risen yesterday today and forevermore Amen. so because he lives i can always face tomorrow so when things get tough i can still say hallelujah Amen. when things get rough i can still say 
Hallelujah. Sing this song with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah.
Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, is our text for today. And for the time that's mine, I want to try and preach as I am led from the thought, God still works. God still works. Have your mind ever played tricks on you? <laughs> you know, you know those moments when you know it will happen, but there is just something niggling at the back of your mind that keeps forcing you to ask yourself, what if? Hello? H hello? Uh, am I the only one? You, you, you know what the outcome might and should and will be, but yet as much as you know and as much as you believe and as much as you think and as much as you practice, somehow there is just something in the back of your mind that leads you with a whole heap of suppositions. Suppose, and suppose, and suppose. And then you come up with, well, if plan A don't work, then I can do plan B. And then plan C, if plan B don't work. And if anything, I go back to plan A. And, and we come up with plans all the time. Sometimes I suggest to us that when we are dealing with God, sometimes that happens. We know that God will work. We know that God does work. Even if God take long to work, we know that even we might not, he might not come when you want him, but you're going to want him when he come. Am I right or am I right? And, and, and even though we know that, in the back of our minds, there is still this thing that makes us wonder if God is going to show up for us one more time. Well, on this Easter Sunday, I've come with a short, simple message, hopefully, hopefully, sim hopefully, with a short but simple message that simply says that God still works. And if I were to just poll the room early in this sermon and ask you a simple question, I'm quite sure in here should erupt with noise. Has God ever worked for you? Yes. Let, me, let, me ask, let me ask it one more time. Has God ever worked for you? Ha have your back ever been up against the wall? Have you ever had more questions than answers? Have you tried everything that you could try and all that you can try still needs to be trying some more? But when you don't think that it will happen, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in, in the words of Mark, immediately and sometimes suddenly, God turns up out of nowhere and God blows your mind and does far more than you have ever asked or imagined or expected. Is this anybody's testimony inside here? Has God ever worked for you? If you can't answer that, I come to tell you, God still works. And I suggest to us that this is where we pick up the text this morning. And I want to suggest to us that the text this morning is the best environment in which we can suggest and conclude that God still works. But before I get to the text, let me tell you a little secret about this whole Easter Day story. 
that this Easter story, this celebration of Christ, this fact that they killed a man on Friday and he stayed in a grave for three days. If you're questioning how we get three days between Friday and Sunday, let me just teach for one little half a minute. The Jews' days went from 6 to 6. So if you died or if anything happened to you before 6 p.m. on any day, it was considered the same day. And so since Jesus died about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that is considered day one. So if you, you continue to do the math thereafter because we all know my math little fuzzy after that. We all know. And I'm going to embarrass myself this good Easter Sunday. We all know how my math is. So, so you figure it out. But, 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 but we know, we know, we know. And I suggest to us that one of the best works that God ever did was that God watched his own son get lied upon, spat upon, beaten, whipped, carry his own cross up a hill god watched his own son hang from two nails three nails two in his wrist and one in his feet and hung him in such a way that his breath was constricted that he could only breathe in but it was difficult to breathe out god watched his own son try to lose or take his voice away by giving him vinegar so he could not talk but God watched his own son, and his own son watched God allow him to die. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God watched his own son, his side be pierced. God watched his own son be buried in a tomb that did not belong to him, but it couldn't belong to him because he didn't need it for too long anyway. It was just a rented space. God, God watched his own son for three days, but early Sunday morning. God did his best work because after all of that, God raised him up to new life in him. I, I, I suggest to us that the Easter story demonstrates God's best work. But here it is. Look at the text and we can see how God still works. The Bible says to us in our text from Mark chapter 16 that, that it is now the day after the Sabbath. And it is the first day of the week. Remember, we're dealing with Jews. Jesus died on a Friday. The Sabbath starts at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So, so, so therefore, they could not go on the Saturday, which would have been the Sabbath day, because they would then be breaking the Sabbath. They are Jews. They go the first day of the week, which is then the Sunday morning. And they go to do what is customary. Now, to be sure, when people die for us, this, and, and this is where... I, I never learned about this until I moved to Antigua, this whole turnout thing. But this is where part of the reason where it comes from. You know, you know, for those of you who wonder what I'm talking about, in Antigua and in some of the British islands, they have this thing called turnout, where after you die and after one year, the whole family comes back again and they come to church and they all dress in black and they want you to sing a hymn and pray for them and all that kind of things. That turnout, that whole turnout, this is where it comes from, you know. Because the burial process was not a one-day, a two-day, or a three-day affair. It was actually a year-long event. So you would die, you would be buried, and when you are buried, the family would then come back as part of their love for you to anoint and spice your body. Almost a hundred pounds of ointment we read on Friday. They brought all of this, this ointment, but what this did is that this helped the body to do, it did a couple of things. One, it helped to de help the body decay, but it also helped to hide the stench. Hello? Are you with me? Stay with me. So, so they came, and then after a year, they would come back to the place where you were buried. By now, your body would have decayed. Your flesh would have decayed, and there's no mummifying. I mean, the, in, the mummies, them, the people from India, they embalmed you. The, the Jews don't do that. They anoint your body with spices. So your body would have decayed, and all is left is your bones, and what they would then come and do is they would come into the same place where you were placed, collect your bones, and put them at the back of the tomb and somebody else would come and be buried there and the process starts all over again. So if we understand that, we then understand that the death and burial process was really a year-long process. It wasn't just a one day, two day, six hours story. This was a year long thing. So when it was not weird for the people who loved you to come and care for you 
even in death. So when Mary Magdalene and the other women went to the tomb that first Easter Sunday morning, it was simply to show and to continue to show their love and their devotion for their master and their savior, Jesus. Now my theological mind, when you look at the conversation, leads me to ask another set of questions, but I'm gonna ask that when I get to that point of the story. So the text says, they come, and they bring these sweet spices that they should anoint Jesus. And they get there very early on the first day of the week. And as they are going, they are having conversations among themselves. And one of the con things that, and the main issue is, you remember that they did say they could put a big old rock stone in front of the grave. Who is going to roll this stone away so that we can get in to do this. Now, now, this is where I ask the theological question. I'm sorry. Allow me to theologi theolo theologize a moment in the pulpit and theologize publicly. Uh, they did hear Jesus say that he will die and come back again after three days. So it means that they themselves did not believe. Because you see, it's very possible for us to walk with Jesus but not believe. But that's a different story altogether. Y'all watch me. Y'all be like, hello. Uh, are you with me? It's very possible for us to be sitting with Jesus and hearing Jesus saying some stuff, but still some parts of us don't believe what he said because these women are asking who going to roll the stone away, but he did tell you before he did that he won't be there after three days. But anyhow, anyhow, they come and they ask themselves, that's just my, my, my rambling mind in the pulpit. Uh, they come and they ask the question, but who's going to roll... Who's going to roll this stone away? And they get there and they see a young man and they obviously now begin to think that the man that they come from putters. Because <laughs> uh, if you come from putters, so they say, then for those people from putters who are watching, uh, take no offense. For those of you who don't know, in Antigua they say putters is a village that have 99 and every time one born to make the hundred, one dead. So they never get the hundred. That's what they say. But, 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 99. I know be a man then they say, but that's a different story. But, uh, uh, <laughs> that's what they say. That's what they say. But I don't know how true that is. Ask Arlene. I don't know how true that is. But, 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 but they're asking themselves. They're asking themselves. They, they go into the tomb now and they see somebody who and they think is a doppy. They think is a ghost inside here. And they, the, 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 the man inside there says, why are you frightened? You looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Come, look with your own two eyes. Come and see where they have laid him. And they were so frightened still that they left the tomb and went and trembled and amazed because they couldn't believe anything that they had said. Now, now can I suggest to us that what God did was God left them an email, a post-it, a stamp. He left them a voice note that simply said to them, you came here, but I want to let you know that I have already done my work. Come, come, don't, don't miss it, don't miss it. He, he, they, he, they come, they're looking for, 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 for Jesus. They are concerned about the stone. They are believing he should be there. When they get to the grave, what they find is a message from God that said to them that I am still a working God. Can I tell us something this good Sunday morning? Sometimes we go expecting some things. And when we go anticipating and expecting some things, what we find is a message from God that I am still a miracle working God. And I've come to say to us this morning that God still works. But, but, but. But before I bring anything out of the text, let me set the context a little bit more. This does not happen at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's part of the reason why we come at 5 o'clock, those of us who come at 5 o'clock. Because... <laughs> That, that was a shameless plug, but anyhow, yeah, 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 Nadia, that was a shameless plug. For those of us who come at 5 o'clock, that's the genesis of us coming 
early in the morning to reenact that and to have that same experience where we come and we come and that's why we end up in the graveyard because we go there and make a bold declaration he is not there he ain't here but he ain't there either he's not there he is risen it is early in the morning before the break of day the sun has not yet shone out the moon and the stars are still up it's still dark night don't miss this context it is dark night it is pitch black and it is as some people say it is before dog frayed them it is out there at that early morning that these women are going out and in the early morning hours of the day God worked. Yeah. Sisters and brothers, can I, can I say to us, can I say to us that the best environment for God to do his work is in the environment that makes no sense to any of us. Oh, y'all making me work real hard. Listen, people, this is my third service for the day. Don't make me work so hard. I've been up since 4.30 this morning. So y'all need to preach a little sermon with me, please. I'm begging. Can I say it one more time? Let me say it one more time so that we can get an amen out of y'all. Y'all, can I say it one more time, y'all? Let me say it one more time, y'all. The best environment for God to work is the environment in which we least expect it. When, 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 when in our mind, in our eyes, in our perspective, in our understanding, this cannot work. It is when we see things, because our human limitations always sees the circumstances and the perspectives in which God cannot work. But I thank God that this Bible that I read tells me that his ways are not our ways, neither are his thoughts our thoughts. This Bible tells me that God will take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. This Bible tells me that I can't think, I can't begin to imagine, for God is able to do far more exceeding and great and abundant and above all that we can ask or think I thank God this morning is there anybody here who want to thank God with me I thank God this morning that when I can't see the end God knows the ending from the beginning so 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 while the day is still dark God was already at work. Can I then lead you? I, that, that, that sets up the whole sermon now. Now that I've told you that, let me tell you two things from the text. Because while the day was still dark, God he teaches us out the text that God then does his best work in the dark. Can I, can I say that one more time? God does his best work in the dark. Look, look, look at the text. In verse 2 of the text, and very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And when they got on their way to the sepulchre, they are asking this, the question and they are asking among themselves, who shall roll the stone away from the door of the sepulchre? Look, 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 look at that, look at that. It is still dark. They can't see. They can't figure it out. So they are still asking, how is this going to work? But God in his infinite wisdom did his work while it was still dark. When they could not see, when they could not figure it out, when they could not work it out, when they could not understand, when they were trying to figure how they going to move it, because after all, they're just women. They ain't got no men among them. We're going to ask the question here. It's Women's Month. Let's celebrate the women. Let's celebrate the women. While, while the women were going, there were no men among them. Thank God for you women. Thank God for the first evangelist, you women. But while they were still trying to understand it, they didn't realize that night and day is the same with God. 
that God don't need day, he don't need night, he just needs a circumstance. And the circumstance was right. And God, when they could not see a way out of no way, God says, I still have the final say. And I can make a way out of no way. And while it was yet dark, God did his best work. They don't know, but when they got there, we might not always know how God works. We might not always have an explanation for how God does his business, but what we do know is that God did his business because when they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. And can I come to tell somebody this morning that you might be journeying through the dark night of your soul. You might be journeying through a dark period of your life, but I've got good news to tell you that it is in this dark night that you are to trust God because when you can't see where you're going, when you don't make sense, when it's all cloudy and foggy before you, God will do his best work and God will blow your mind and when the door seems closed God will still open doors for you when everybody else says they can't do it God will prove to you that he is still able to do it that's why I couldn't wait till this point to say that God is able to save he's able to keep he's able to satisfy I don't know about you but my God is able he is a abundantly able all of my needs to supply when I can't see it when I can't figure it out when it's still dark and cloudy for me God still does his work oh bless his name when 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 when, when. so you you can imagine you can imagine that these women get to the tomb they are trying to figure it out to realize God has already worked it out can I tell you then don't worry about some stuff. Can I talk to you, church? Don't worry about some stuff. Can I talk to you, church? Let some things go, church. Don't, 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 don't hold it up. Let it go. Can I, can I say it one more time? Let it go. When nighttime come, go to sleep. God gives sweet sleep to his beloved. Let it go. Put it in the hands of God and go to your bed and wake up the next morning. And if the issue is still there, say, God, I trusted you last night with it, but today I'm going to trust you with it one more time. And if tonight the issue is still there, say, God, I trusted you last night and I trust you all day today. I am going to trust you one more time tonight. And if it's next month, you still put it in the hands of God. Don't worry about it. Worry only makes you look old. It will make you look haggard. It will make your clothes there hang off of you. Don't worry about it. Leave it to God because here is the good news. God will take care of you. Oh, hallelujah. That's the word this Easter Sunday morning. Don't worry about it. Then woman was going to the logger logging with all the spice them and worrying about it for only when they got there. God don't do it. Can, 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 I, can, I, ask you, can I ask you to let God do God's work? You know, you know, one of the hardest things we can do as people is try to be God. I've said this before. I've said this before. That's why, that's why, if, you, if don't tell people that you're going to pray for them if you're not going to pray for them. Because, because the ministry of intercession is heavy. Is a, because when you talk about interceding, what you are doing is taking up somebody else's pain and burden and agreeing to carry it to God on their behalf. Don't tell people you're going to do it and then not do them. If you know you can't carry the burden, leave it. Don't try to play God. Don't play, try to play Jesus. Hear this. There are just some things sometimes. There are some issues we face sometimes that, that, that you can't fix it yourself. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I confess something? Um, in my family, it seems that sometimes I am Mr. Fix-It. 
and my dearest mother, she's here. Take, close your ears, mommy. Take off your glasses so you can't hear. She, li <laughs> she, she likes to say, she says it all the time, that if there is a problem, if Remy don't know somebody, he knows somebody who knows somebody. Thank God for that. But, but let me tell you a secret. There are sometimes, there are some things that come across my plate. And I figure, well, me don't know what to do with this one, yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden, Mr. Fix-It needs a Mr. Fix-It. Because sometimes we like to play like we can fix everything. And some of us suffer from a severe, acute case of Jesus complex. We want to be everybody's savior. Everybody knight in shining armor, riding in on the white horse and so, and fix. But there comes a point in time when you can't fix everything. But let me tell you a secret. When you stop, a death so sorry, I'm sorry, my sister. Let me let me speak properly so you can understand. When you stop, it is there God begins. That's just for you. For the rest of we, when you stop, a death so God start. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me come back. Let me come back. When you can't fix it, God is still willing and able and waiting just for you to put it in his hand and to prove to you once again that God is still a working God. Thank God that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Oh, hallelujah. Can I keep preaching? Can I preach with I only got two points today, you know, but I feel good right about my soul down God happy. You realize my soul down happy? I I'm real happy today. Because cause I, I I've seen God. I'm trying to leave this alone, but I can't leave it. I've seen I just gotta testify. I've seen God do some things. I've watched God open some doors. I've seen God fix some lives. I've seen God when everybody else said, look. When I figured I can't do, I've watched God open doors and turn things around. And I sit down and say, boy, God, where, how could that happen? And God had to remind me that you have all positive or all negative or some kind of all blood. But my blood still works. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm trying to leave it alone. But God, 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 God does his best work. In the dark, but here, here, here is, here's the last thing, and the final thing. I didn't mean to, I got a little emotion, sorry. I'm not sorry, but uh, my soul is just happy. Go ahead, go ahead. But God, can, can I tell you the last thing? Here, here, here's the last in the text. God, God does his best work in the dark. But can I also tell you that God does his best work when you try to stop him? Let me say that one more time. God does his best work when you try to stop him. Come back to the story. Remember after Jesus died, they went and said, um, uh, go back up to the previous chapter. They said, remember he said he coming, this imposter. Remember they said he's coming back in three days? So, so here's what you need to do. You need to secure this tomb so that they can't come back and say, they can't go and steal him. You remember? Remember the story? Yeah. They can't come back and so they can't come back and say that they and steal him and then try to pass it off as if he's alive. So to try to stop that problem, they made an order. Put the big stone in front of the grave because somehow Pilate figured that he could block <laughs> the works of God. <laughs> Go ahead.
Go ahead. Okay, okay. He, 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 Pilate figured, he, Pilate figured, Pilate figured that he could block the works of God. It was not just the big stone, but he put the big stone and then put security for the big stone. When, when Sister Ivani, how the story go? When dog have money, then buy cat food. So, so that's what I learned from Sister Ivani. When dog have money, they buy cat food. You can imagine that Pilate put a whole man to watch a stone and a dead man. So, so look, look, wait, wait, let's process this. Let's process this. You killed him in the most cruel and vile way possible. So you don't even have confidence in the works of your own hands that you now have to put the big stone and then send a centurion and guards to watch over a big stone that is holding a dead man that was dead before you take it down. Yeah. And to make sure he was dead, they didn't just kill him on the cross, they pierced his side because yes. they wanted to ensure he was dead. Yes, Hold on, they. look at them trying to look at Pilate trying to play fool to block the works of God. Yeah. Look at him. You have so much time, energy, money, staff, and people that you put a living man to guard an inanimate object and a dead man. You know, sometimes, Sister Yvette, people try to block the blessings of God on you and they will go to no ends of the earth they will do everything they can think about and everything that you can think about they will say that you have done to stop God or stop a blessing that God has for you can, can I talk to somebody else? Say, am I right or am I right? Can I, can I talk, let me talk to somebody else on this side. So, 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 Trisha, so, 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 sometimes, sometimes, so, Trisha, that, 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 that there are people who try to play God with, their, with your life and they want to run your life when they can't walk theirs. <laughs> My time is going. I got to go. I got to go. Uh, uh, Nadia, why are you watching me like that? Because that, 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 that's, that's the honest truth. Because here's what they try to do. They try to block what God has in store for you. But early Sunday morning, before the sun rose, he got up, and the Bible says, with all power in his hands, with the keys of death, hell, and the grave, they tried to stop God from working. They tried to hinder the move of God. They tried to, to belittle the hand of God. But can I tell you, nothing that nobody do. There is no man on earth. There is no woman on earth. There is no child on earth. He no born yet and he mother done dead. That can stop the works of God. That when God decides he is going to bless you. When God decides he is going to move in your life. When God decides that it's time for certain things to happen for you. There is nothing or nothing or no one who can stop the blessings of God. Because let me tell you what happens. God does that so that he can prove to you and to everybody else exactly who he is. He's still Alpha and Omega. He's still beginning and the end. He's still first and the last. He's still mighty. He's still powerful. He's still awesome. He's still magnificent. He's still worthy. He's still, am I talking to anybody? He still has all power in his hand. He's still God who sits high and looks low. He still rules over heaven and the earth. He still has the power to change and the power to build up and the power to pluck down. God is just God and God is all powerful and there is nobody who who can stop the blessing of God. So when you're done, let me tell you a secret. You see when people try to block you, I'm done, the sermon done. You see when people try to block you and try to stop you from doing all this stuff, 
when God work, here's what happens. They sit down and say, but how? And that's the question you want them to ask. But how? But, but how come? But how did they? But how did she? But how did he? That's the question. Because you see, when, when, when God works, when people try to stop you, it is for you then to turn around and testify about what God has done for you. Because you see, sometimes you just have to be a little boasting in God. Let me tell you something. Me boasting bad, you know. Yeah, man. Let me tell you. Me no be good looking. I boasting bad. You don't got to tell me. I know I look good. I know I is handsome. That's why Rena couldn't say no. Yeah. I know I could match two clock together every once in a while. Me boasting bad, you know. But let me tell you. That means nothing to me. Let me tell you what I really boast about. I boast about this fact, that when the principal of St. Joseph's Academy told my mother and my father that I would become an undesirable, that same principal before he died had to watch me and call me Reverend Doctor. That's God. Let me tell you what I am boasting about. That when they said I wouldn't last six months in ministry, it's been 20 something plus, I can't even remember how much years it is now. It's been 20 plus years. I can tell you about God. When they say I couldn't pastor a church, I've pastored more churches in this province than a lot of staff members will ever pastor because I've worked in five out of six conferences. That's God. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. I was lost in sin and Jesus took me in. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. I know the power of his blood. I can tell you that the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it shall never lose its power. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. I can tell you that when the anointing of God rests upon your life, the anointing of God breaks yokes and makes deliverance possible. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. Jesus saved me. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. He lives. That's what I'm boasting about. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. And he ties. Is there anybody else in here can boast like me? A long life's narrow way. Let me tell you what I'm boasting about. That's my favorite song right there. Because he lives. I'm boasting about that. I can face tomorrow. Let me tell you why I'm boasting. Because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds the future. My life is worth living just because he lives. My God still works. Oh, bless his name. And let me tell you, if I can say that this Easter Sunday, so can you. Because that's my testimony. I got it right. But let me ask. Let me pull the room one more time. Is there anybody inside here that knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that God still works? Let me ask the question one more time. Uh, if the person next to you ain't respond yet, touch them, touch them leg and say, you know, here with the pastor now ask you. D is, let me ask the question one more time. Is there anybody in here who can testify that God still works? Is there anybody here got their own testimony that God still works? So then let me sing it now. Because he lives. Let's go, Alvin. I'm done. Let's sing that. Because he lives. And he's still working. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. Life is worth living. Because he lives. Is that your testimony today? 
Is that your testimony today? That life, your life is worth living. God is working, yeah? Life is worth living. Because he lives. Sing that with me now. Because he lives. Because... Because I know the few life is worth living. My life is worth living. Yeah, God sent his son. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. They called him Jesus. He is love. He He lived and died by to buy my pardon. An empty grave. An empty grave. My Savior lives because he lives. Well, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fair is gone. Because I know. sing that chorus one more time because he lives because well I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future. My life is worth the living just he lives. Our Father and our God, thank you this morning that you have not stopped working that you are still on the job that even when the nights are dark doesn't stop your power from moving and even when people try their best to stop you God you do your best work when people try so we can give a testimony that we are who we are and I am who I am all because you are a miracle working God. Thank you for working the miracle of the tomb. Thank you for raising Jesus so that we can declare today that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And because he lives, we have hope for the future. We bless you this morning for your word. And God, today, if there's someone here who does not yet know and does not yet, who does not yet want to acknowledge that you are at work in their lives, God, we pray that you will work on them, that you will convict them until they come to know you as the God who still works for them. Thank you again for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We say thank you to our pastor today for that powerful message. God still works, so let go and let God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow.
Let us all stand as we recite our commissioning. We have sung songs and prayed prayers. Confess our sins and may dissolve in our best effort to worship. Our goal in worship has been to meet the risen Christ and to be transformed into a people in whom God can be confident. As we leave this sacred place today, we recognize that God is sending us into the world to be its salt and light. As we go, we will be peacemakers and not agents of confusion. We will speak life instead of death. And finally, we pray that we will be witnesses of Christ to all we come in contact with, even to the ends of the earth. And now may we go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's spirit and with the knowledge that he still works. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and our loved ones near and far, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will continue and sing our well-known trumpet, because I know a lot of us are waiting to sing this today.
Sunday would not be complete if we did not sing the trumpet. I say thank you to Brother Sonny and, and Brother Alvin for leading us so well in our singing today. As we have our recessional hymn, we have our basket for Lenten sacrificial on one side and a walk up on the other side. If you forget your walk up today, it's okay, you can bring it next week. But we have a basket here for you, and so we will sing. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he's living, whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always there. Let us all see.
for the weak. The end of the world is not its destruction, but its translation into heaven, and the spirit of Easter is all about hope, love, and joyful living, and may your hearts be filled with hope and renewed faith. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Happy Easter to one and all.